Well, yeah. I can still I can still write songs about having a messy night out. <laughs> it's art, John. I don't know. I don't need to be wild. <laughs> I can pretend to be. <laughs> You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Wolf Alice with The Beach. It is the opening track to Blue Weekend, the new album which has just come out today. And I'm very pleased to say that I'm going to play you the whole thing tonight with a bit of help from the whole of the band as well. I've got Ellie, Joel, Joff and Theo linked to me online. Hello, how are you all? Good. Good. (laughs) Hello. It's great to see you all and great to speak to you tonight. Um, It was also fantastic to see you on the Glastonbury live stream um, the other weekend. Um, um, you looked like you were having so much fun being able to play together and and just perform. Um, how was it? It was amazing, yeah. It was so great. I'm glad to hear that you got on. Most people <laughs> had a bit of difficulty, eh? Well, I was lucky in that I'd planned ahead and I was going to look at it on the Sunday because I couldn't do the Saturday. Um, and so so I didn't suffer that problem. But um, yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, the whole stream was brilliant. But um, a great way of welcoming Wolf Alice back into the world of, of music and entertainment um, and it seems like it's been a long time in a way I mean four years technically since the last record um, how have you used that constructively by making another one <laughs> <laughs> yeah I guess maybe I'll rephrase the question so for four years since the last Wolf Alice album how much of that time has been spent thinking about this new record Blue Weekend yeah I think like since we came off tour it was in the back of our minds even if we were off doing other things um and I guess we've been creating it. All of our sense of time is really bad, isn't it? But it's like, is it like two, three years? I don't know. <laughs> we fin- well, we finished touring Visions of a Life in December 2018. We took some time and we took like a couple of months off um, just to kind of rest because we were spent. And yeah, we spent the rest of that year kind of writing working on the stuff that people had written in the intervening years and then we went into a studio in brussels um a place called icp in january 2022 22 no that's in the future <laughs> <laughs> that's a strange thing to say too many too many twos two 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 twos in um january 2020 right and started recording the record there with uh marcus drabs Right. Okay. So, and then, so that was January 2020. Oh, yeah. How long did you stay there then? Um, Seven years. That- <laughs> <laughs> We're still there, according to Joff, I think. But, um, <laughs> yeah, well, we did it like February to May uh, in Brussels, and it's a long time. But we were really looked after by the guys at ICP. I always, always want to give them a shout out for keeping us so safe during such a scary time. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways, um, I guess. Uh, you probably thought, well, it's great because we're all together. We're all in the place we want to be and we're kind of protected. We're in our own little bubble. But at the same time, you don't know what else is going on in the world and uh, completely you know, separate from your families and loved ones and all that kind mm. of stuff. So a strange a strange way to experience the, the first lockdown and that first uh, unleashing of the pandemic. Um, Blue Weekend is the title of the album. Um, we're playing this at the weekend. Um, is Blue Weekend um, meant to be, is it a sad weekend? What's behind the title? Yeah, I think it can be, it could be a sad weekend. <laughs> I think that's why we like the colour, that's why we like the name of the album. It was originally, Ellie said it while we were in a cab in Brussels quite early on when we'd gone out there uh, recording and we were looking for things to do around where the studio was. She said, next blue weekend, why don't we go and see this forest that was apparently near there? No one's ever seen this mystical forest that's responsible for all of this. Um, I'm sure it probably doesn't exist. Uh, And uh, yeah, Joel just, Joel Joel kind of picked up on blue weekend and said, oh, I really love that. And I think with album names, when something sticks around and kind of um, seems to not sound too cringe when you say it, it's usually a good sign. And it's that, yeah, that duality of blue and it can be, a blue sky it can be blue as in sad and i think there's a lot of emotion on the record and it kind of just fitted yeah and next blue weekend ellie then so you you just kind of said that um is that was that a phrase that you were already familiar with or did you have is blue in your diary as being off you get the weekend off when you're recording or you know where did it come from no i i meant it literally like i think when we were in the cab it was like a really clear blue sky it was really sunny and I meant it like that. It was not, you know, n- nothing poignant. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, the album begins with the beach, which we've just heard, and there's the beach too at the end of the record. Is is that a scene setter? Is that setting us up um, for for the, the the whole narrative of the album? Is it? Do you think of it in those terms? I think like beginning and ending with the theme of nature, and you know something when you think of the beach. I don't know. I think of you know the sea and so, something larger than life itself. You know, and I thought that that was a nice way to especially to end really uh, I think both those songs are exploring similar themes of friendship and also have you know uh, the recurring nods to the beach and to nature or whatever so it felt like you've been on a journey to start with one which was anxious and then a bit tense and end with the same thing but positive and uplifting and and nice you know it felt like then your kind of journey had been is complete and yet you could go round again and again you know yeah um well it sets it up really nicely and um it leads on to delicious things which is the second track um so how have you sequenced this album because it, it's quite mellow um really as a, as a whole body of work and it's really interesting the way that you've you've got the big rock numbers in there a couple of times which break it up but the, the first three tracks in a way from the beach into delicious things you're well we're we're floating on, on the wolf palace sound um as the as the waves come in from the beach and we go on to delicious things sorry i'm i'm kind of making it up as i go along but uh, <laughs> i like that yeah it sounds good though sounds good. <laughs> write some lyrics maybe yeah. i should <laughs> but um so i mean the beach almost has a uh, the sound of the sea within it and so does the the beach too later on in the record and and with delicious things it starts with that kind of quite laid back drum fill that kind of drum sound which is yeah it's almost like hey we are on the beach you know we're kind of chilled out yeah we always said that it kind of sounded like uh an opening credits to something i always imagined it as like the start of a big tv program or something you know and whereas the beach is like pre that so yeah floating is kind of yeah i like to imagine it like that <laughs> but from listening to the words it sounds like you've washed up in california and you were hanging out in LA. And I know you mean you recorded the last album in LA, didn't you? We did. Yep. With Justin Meldell Johnson. Mm. But during a, a, a spell of torrential rain, I seem to remember Joel oh, yeah. telling me about. We landed there and Donald Trump was inaugurated and it was pissing it down for two weeks, which was quite, uh, it felt like a bad omen. And I think uh, it was. <laughs> For, for the world it definitely was for our trip to LA to make the album we had a good time but it was yeah we brought the rain to LA in the beginning of it but Los Angeles yeah it comes up in, in delicious things and the kind of character narrative and stuff like that and I think as a British band and as a young British band when we first went there you, you kind of look at it in like kind of a romanticized cinematic way it's kind of full of all these things you've seen in films and stuff like that and I think we've always had quite a fun relationship with going there and obviously we've spent quite a bit of time there and got quite a few friends there and stuff so it's popped up in in blue weekend now <laughs> yeah yeah well i like the idea that you know it, it it seems to be a cast of various different characters doing various different things and and that idea that you know sometimes you you catch yourself and think well how did i get here how how it is it that i am hanging out in la you know um i, mean, I kind of pinch yourself moment yeah exactly that and the cast of characters i mean are these real people are these uh constructs or or an amalgamation of different people you met i mean did you get to spend a much longer time out there um because obviously you went there to record and you'd have been tied up with with doing that for that but as, as theo says you know you've been there a few times but do you actually get to spend a long spell where you get to meet some strange people i mean we've toured across the world and met many brilliant and strange and fun and funny people along the way, you know, and <clears throat> I think, you know, a lot of our songwriting is not directly lifting experiences exactly as they are, but, you know, using them to construct a story or whatever. Yeah. Well, we're going to be welcomed to, into that story now. Um, it is Delicious Things. It is Wolf Alice on Exposure, Radio X. 
It is Wolf Alice on Exposure Radio Exodus Lipstick on the Glass from the new album Blue Weekend, which has just come out, and I'm playing you the whole thing tonight. I'm John Kennedy, and Wolf Alice are connected to me online. We've got all four of them. Uh, Lipstick on Glass, the third track on the album, um, and... It, it, you know, again, it continues this kind of mellow feel that you've established with the beach and delicious things. Um, and I, I feel that we're really kind of welcomed into the, the world of Wolf Alice in, in a way. You know, that this kind of the sound world that you can hear on all your records where, you know, you, you like uh, a, a kind of a, a bit of ambience. You like a, a good drone and, and you like a, a bit of a kind of shoegaze feel or a trip hop vibe to what you're doing, maybe combined with a bit of a, a folk aspect um and so you know how does this feel to you lipstick on the glass you know in terms of you know when you're creating something like this felt like hard work for a very long time (laughs) lipstick on the glass was probably one of the most was one of the more difficult ones to record i think i think we had two kind of we had one version that was kind of fairly electronic and we had one that was very bandy and we were kind of caught between those two extremes really neither one felt quite right and we kind of met somewhere in the middle but kind of finding where that middle ground was took a very long time took a lot of kind of experimenting throwing a lot of stuff at the wall um and not everything stuck but um yeah we got there in the end i think probably in terms of hours spent it was one of the most labor intensive ones joel's got about a million drum kits on it yeah, like just said, we just kind of took a different route with it. And Marcus had this idea to flip a snare drum over and play brushes on the snare side really quietly and really compressed. And then from there, ended up stacking like four different drum kits on top of it. We got us creative with it. And then Joff and Elia came back in one day and had done loads to it, all the string parts and stuff in the middle and things. It just evolved. How prepared are these songs before you go in to record them? You know, to to what level of preparation in terms of structure and and sound um, when you went into to the recording studio with with Marcus? As prepared as we could have been, I think. You know, you know, all of these songs will have multiple demos. You know, I mean, we usually you know you you start the writing process with a huge list of songs, and you you know make some demos, you play them, and then you pick your favourite ones, and then you do the same again, and then you kind of slim that down and do the same again so I mean some songs we had a very good idea about what we were trying to achieve something like Last Man on Earth it's not too dissimilar to Ellie's demo to be honest but something like Lipstick on the Glass had multiple different demos all kind of using different kind of um, bits of musical um, techniques and so yeah, that was that was one of the more difficult ones to kind of find its natural place and home. Yeah, and uh, what's it what's it about? Lipstick on the glass. It's about I think like a moment before you have to make a decision on something. You know that kind of tense moment and being pulled in both directions. Um, Lipstick on the Glass is followed by Smile, which people will know because it's one of the uh, singles that's already come out from the album. And and you switch gears massively um, when you get into Smile and you go full on uh, kind of grunge Wolf Alice, for want of a better description. It's got such a great kind of rolling groove to this. Um, Where did this come from? This was originally Joel. Joel had a really amazing demo that was kind of, it had the riff that you hear now but it was almost in like a chemical brothers rendering and it was really cool and it stuck around for ages and we just knew that that riff was something really special and like you said before we've kind of the palette of the record was a little bit kind of you know that dreamy slower stuff that you we, you you will have heard up until that point on the album and we knew we needed a bit of an energy injection as well and i think ellie just came up with these fantastic lyrics and i think the two combined and then it was pulled and pushed in a lot of different directions we were trying to figure out how it's the best was the best way to have it um but yeah that it's 
very fun to play <laughs> yeah yeah i bet i mean it's it, it's great and it's interesting that it had a more electronic feel to start with you know kind of chemical brothers because i can really hear that in the groove as well that you could have it you know versioned in that way um it would be really interesting to see the chemical brothers cover this um i'm sure they do an amazing yeah, job listening please uh we'll send you the stems <laughs> and then when when you come up with such a great riff and you start working on it and you know d do the the, the words and that kind of rap that you do, Ellie. I mean, does that all come out in one one splurge while you're listening to the track? Well, I'd originally ri wrote it for another track, so I already had them. But yeah, I just I think after the, you, you've got your first line and you just kind of roll with that and then fill in the spaces afterwards, or you know, make a few adjustments. Um, but yeah, it's like one of those songs you don't realise maybe that you've got something to say and, until you said it and you're like, oh, <laughs> obviously had some kind of chip on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the contrast within the song as well. I mean, not only does it have this amazing groove, but the, the chorus is completely different. And then there's this great kind of breakdown uh, just to the bass. And then, you know, it's followed by this kind of great drum section um, and how did you create all of those? You know, did that take a lot of work or did you say at this point we should just change it up and just go this way? I think uh, two key elements of that song is actually acoustic guitar and tambourine. And like once you take and put those in sections, it can transform bits quite substantially. Yeah, I, I think we, we were always wondering how to like still have dynamics in something which essentially just rolls on and repeats, you know. The drum break idea was was something I'd programmed in originally from the demo and it was just trying to like learn how to do something physically like that. So the parts were kind of all there and Joff came up with that really cool break that's before the break and it was it was just fitting the puzzle pieces together, I guess, and trying to work out like sonically what will keep your interest as you float along. You know, it's only three minutes something, but quite a lot changes and quite a lot happens and loads of vocals and yeah, like you say, bass changes. So I think once we realised our interests were being kept on an idea that we had for ages and played for ages, and hopefully other people would as well. Yeah, totally. And we're going to hear it now. This is Wolf Alice with Smile on Exposure Radio X. <laughs> You're listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Wolf Alice with Safe From Heartbreak, If You Never Fall In Love. It's the fifth song on their new album, Blue Weekend, the third Wolf Alice album. It's just come out this Blue Weekend, and I'm very pleased to say that all four of the band um, are with me online. So we've got Ellie and Joff and Theo and Joel um, staring down cameras, um, and it's great to have you with us. Um, Safe From Heartbreak, If You Never Fall In Love. Um, it's such a poignant song and such a kind of uh, almost gentle, folky response to smile. You know, I, I love the way that you keep shifting gear on the new record. Um, what can you tell us about this? I mean, this features what I'm describing to myself as, as the choir of Ellie's. So there's like a, a choir of Ellie's on the new Wolf Alice album that, that seem to rush into the room at various different points on various different tracks. Um, is that the case or did you actually get any real choirs involved well a lot of it is joel to be fair it's the choir the choir, the of, choir of joel fantastic wow. i do the low bits and the very high bits yeah yeah <laughs> not the middles <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so then do you just layer up those those um those bits i'm, I'm now envis envisaging a, a kind of you know 50 joels all dressed in um kind of choir type smocks and yeah, singing Joel, in the background. Joel for every occasion, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. I mean, it would have been. It would be fun to do something with a choir, but yeah, COVID and all wasn't going to yeah. be that. I the think. COVID choir. <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> but it's great to have that that kind of vocal range within the band that you can draw on and then use in this way because it it seems to be a, um, one of the key elements of the whole of Blue Weekend is the, is this kind of choral element to the vocal sound at times. Yeah, I think we like just the idea of making things sound big and yeah, I guess that was one way of doing it. And, you know, I've always really enjoyed finding harmonies and stuff and so has Joel. So yeah, yeah, we got Joel, uh, Joff and Theo on some of the tracks as well. Yeah, I was Very say, low down in the four mix. of us, we can do <laughs> just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Theo kind of down here in the mix, though, you know. Yeah. Te textural, we call it. <laughs> <laughs> Despair our feelings. <laughs> I call it sexual. 
<laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything more about Safe from Heartbreak that we should hear about? It was a tough one as well because we recorded it all in one key, didn't we? And then oh, I didn't, was... we didn't like it. And Joff had to do because that his guitar part is played on two guitars, isn't it? It's like a dueling guitar part. Yeah. So one of them. So the whole kind of mo in, with the guitars in this tune was that we wanted it to sound kind of like mechanical and rhythmical. So it was a case of really, really being ultra precise and getting you know the perfect perfect takes down and it took us a very long time especially when you have two guitars doing that at the same time <laughs> then we came into the studio one day and someone went doesn't sound like the right key hours and hours and hours me and the engineer sitting there doing that and we had to do it all again <laughs> <laughs> so what key did it go from and into the next key which what were the keys in question oh, i'm not sure if it was a key actually or a tempo because we tried to slow oh. it down or speed it up it was one the, bpm too so and the guitars kind of went a little bit weird and we were going no i think the guitars are still okay wow it sounds like hard work but at the same time worth it to to get it right and i mean because you wouldn't be happy if it you you re it got as far as the record and and you realized only then that Oh, wrong. of course. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. So thank you to Ian Berryman, who engineered the record, who was uh, very patient in that regard. And following, say, from Heartbreak, we have How Can I Make It OK? Um, and, you know, th the two work so well together, I think. And and I love that sentiment of How Can I Make It OK? Um, and um, this kind of grows again. And are those are... Uh, uh, do you lose a, use a lot of synthesizers on this record? Do you think? I mean, are there lots of keyboard parts that we just are unaware of, or are those um, things that you're achieving via an amazing array of pedals? Yeah, I don't actually think that. How can I make it okay? Is as heavy synth heavy, synth heavy as stuff like feeling myself. There's the original things from Ellie's demo, like the opening staccato strings and some airy synths. Um, I definitely think a lot of the sonics have come from Joff. And there's on the guitars and the ebos and there is some percussive like programming but um no i can't actually certainly less than something like don't really kisses or yeah like water or something like that mm. there's actually quite a lot of organic sounds in this song just driving it along yeah and it b kind of builds and and builds almost to a uh, in, in a fleetwood mac-esque way possibly yeah i remember playing it in our rehearsal room and we were like we were just it was just building and building and building. And we were like, when do we stop? <laughs> we're like, and again, do the chorus again. Or eventually, okay, this is getting ridiculous. Um, yeah, and I think like Fleetwood Mac, I mean, Fleetwood Mac were, the net name was banded about a little bit just because I think we, when you're writing, you know, big pop, when you want to write pop songs, but you don't want to, you know, take it down that like completely kind of programmed route. You know, you want to be still playing your guitar and it sound organic. Like they're quite a great reference point, you know. Excellent. Um, well, we're going to hear it now. How can I make it OK? Wolf Alice on Exposure, Radio X. <laughs> Play the greatest hits. It is Wolf Alice on Exposure Radio X. It is the seventh song on their new album, Blue Weekend. And what a track. Um, I've been working out to it regularly at home. Um, it's it's such an energy uplift in the middle of the album. Um, and it, it sounds like you're having an awful lot of fun here. Yeah, we are. Uh, I really like the idea of people working out to this song. <laughs> Just makes me want to run on the spot here. Oh, good. So, well, that's the kind. Of, that's the, what it is supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. It's a. It. It. It's great. I said a kind of instant classic in a way, and and has. Uh, it seems to have a massive um, helping of of irony or humour or or something about it. You know, is, is this the response to, you know, to to being told, look, just play the hits, or is this your own response to seeing a band and thinking? we just want the hits or, or or is it just you mentioned the kitchen i'm not sure what what it, 
what it refers to necessarily, but is it you're doing some stuff in the kitchen and you've got somebody's greatest hits on? Yeah, it's so funny that everyone thinks it's like a dig at people telling us to play our greatest hits as if that's ever happened to us. I know. <laughs> you, 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 need a, you need a greatest hits to be able to, <laughs> to, be able to say. need a hit. Yeah. No, no, it's more like, you know, us putting on the greatest hits when we're dancing in the kitchen on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a homage to, I would say, a homage to the less admirable parts of going out. <laughs> Which, yeah, I, I was going to ask you to describe that behaviour. It's funny because I think of you, Joff, as the the sensible one who's who doesn't have a messy night out. <laughs> well, I can still I can still write songs about having a messy night out. <laughs> It's art, John. I don't, need, I don't need to be wild. I can pretend to be. That's a very good point. You can live <laughs> vicariously through... Through, through music, yeah, exactly. Through, through music. It's safe there. <laughs> yeah. It's great, though. And I love that, that kind of male vocal bit where, where you, you, know, you say, play the greatest hits. Um, oh, yeah. For my low bits. <laughs> it's great. Um, and a nice contrast to everything else that we've heard so far on the album. And then you follow it with Feeling Myself, um, which you mentioned in passing before. And there's there's all sorts of stuff going on in Feeling Myself. I mean, it, there are elements that, you know, the, the drum beat at one point reminds me of Teardrop by Massive Attack. Um, but there's a kind of folky element to this uh, as well that there is throughout the album. And also, I guess, throughout, you know, your, your work in in total um joff you put out that solo album um last year um where you were playing various instrumentals um and that's such a seems to be such an important foundation in a way that that kind of sound and that guitar style of of what wolf alice do you know how, how much does that inform what you do for wolf alice i don't think it did on previous records to be fair i think i was kind of coaxed into it by the others and i think it's it's something that really paid off um yeah because you know obviously all that that folk stuff that folk playing is something that kind of predates my membership of wolf alice it's kind of my first love in terms of instruments and music really i think there are several times when people just went just go fiddle around with that weird looking guitar over there they go well okay yeah and it seemed to work so it was a nice kind of it felt like bringing something new to the table which was old. <laughs> <laughs> which is it? Oh, always I'm having a, a shocker today. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's great. To, we always hear this side of Joff in like changing rooms, yet we don't hear it necessarily on our records. And it's like jaw dropping guitar playing. Like you need to do this on an album. So yeah, like Safe from Heartbreak and things as well also has that blending in, which is yeah. really great. Yeah. The year was 2022. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, I could also hear feeling myself sit nicely beside Billie Eilish, in a way. Um, you know, I think you could play the, you know, one of her songs back to back with feeling myself, and I think it would, would flow really well. You no, know, I mean that's the interesting thing is the way that you incorporate other things that are going on around you as well, maybe subliminally, but they they mm. connect. That's cool. I mean, I remember the first demo. This was an early song, feeling myself, the original demo from Ellie, and it had that had like a mob a modern pop kind of feel to it which i think we found exciting and we tried to explore and then like you say put bits of our wolf alice personality into that kind of sound as well and it has that big drop um mm. which is great uh, uh, oh. you know each time i've been listening to it, i've been waiting for the waiting for the drop you know, <laughs> in that way that you do was that was that part of the demo was that originally there is that something that emerged through working through the song i think it was originally there wasn't it yeah it was a bit of a I, happy accident wasn't it i th i think there was that ellie had sent over a list of demos we all kind of shared demos at the beginning of the process um and we got yeah like joel said to this Airbnb in Somerset, and we, you know, we'd already shared our songs, and we were kind of playing through some others. And I think someone went to Elliot just like at the end of the session. It was like, got anything else? Any half things? And she went, yeah, got this thing. And all of us were like, whoa! Why didn't you mm. include that in the first batch? That's ridiculous. Immediately, just appealing. Mm. How long did you spend in Somerset? Only a week. So was that like 2019? <laughs> yes. 
I, I like to get a timeline. I know, I know that you, you're not interested, but uh, <laughs> I love the timeline. And I like, I see, I also like picturing you all in this Airbnb in Somerset. I mean, because of the beach, I'm assuming it's near the sea. Um, it's probably not at all. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. It's no. not. <laughs> And we don't know what it was. Yeah, so maybe it was by the sea. You were focusing, focusing. On, on sharing your <laughs> demos and working hard, and 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 luckily getting this out of Ellie's demo bag. Um, is, is there a reluctance sometimes, Ellie, sharing things with people? Um, I think I always kind of eventually do, but yeah, some maybe I don't know. Sometimes you want to present a more finished thing or. If something's new, like I often like a litmus test for me is how much I personally go back to a demo. So if I if it's new, you don't know how much you're going to return to it yet. So yeah, but no, 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 really, no. We're going to listen to feeling myself now. This is Wolf Alice on Exposure Radio X. <laughs> You are listening to Exposure on Radio X. I'm John Kennedy, and that is Wolf Alice with The Last Man on Earth from the new album Blue Weekend, which I'm playing in its entirety with a little help from all four of the band. We have Joel and Theo and Joff and Ellie connected online. And The Last Man on Earth was our first taste of this new record, really. Um, and, you know, where did this come in the whole creation of, of Blue Weekend? I remember talking about it when we were playing Pilton Party. Yeah, I remember listening to it in, in the kitchen. It was really sunny. I don't know if that narrows it down. You said earlier on, Joff, that this was pretty realised from the demo that Ellie had done. So a, a lot of the sections and the parts had all been kind of sketched out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we pretty much kept to, fairly to the original structure. I can't really remember now. Um, yeah, I think it was the same that we had just like... Uh, no solo we just had that passage in the middle which were like one day someone will do a solo on this and we don't know what that will be which only came at the very 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 end of the album when we came back to when we were in london the solo that was always blank until the last minute <laughs> so it could have could it have remained blank do you think no no there had to be something i kind of had then realized how poorly i'd performed so um spent a couple of days literally just doing solos over that part at home and i think i sent the guys a list of about 20 potential solos and uh, to, uh, to what stage of completion then are these demos that you do ellie i mean do you put drums on them do you um you know do all the different parts or is it just m the main tune uh well i mean everything's different I like sometimes someone will send over something that they've you know thought of every every nuance like even the how they would imagine it to be produced or whatever you know but i don't want to ever present much of a finished thing because you know you want everyone's personality on it and i don't have any patience either <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, there's this great little kind of shift into an almost just for a few seconds uh, into a kind of almost beatlesy or 60s style um bit that um that comes about three minutes in that I really, really like. It kind of just to, and then it goes back. Um, yeah, it's uh, a nice little touch. <laughs> a friend of mine said to me when he was listening, he was like, oh, I love you guys. It's so interesting because you've got a wicked song like Last Man on Earth. And then you just put that bit in <laughs> that kind of like ruins the song. <laughs> and it's like, it's interesting, but then you just go back to it. It was like, <laughs> like, is, that, is, like, <laughs> is that a compliment? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of remember being like, Oh shit! Like every song is always using like the same two chords or the like, same kind of style or something. I was like, I need to add something else in. I was like, I think just like quickly added a different key or whatever. And then I was like, nah. Like I remember really remember being like, it needs. Why don't I ever add any like change or anything? And then for about four seconds, like. Okay, here, have an F, 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 and then back to it. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it. I think it. I think it's great. Um, no Hard Feelings is the next song, uh, track 10 on the new record. Um, and this is another one that people might have heard before the album came out um, because you shared it. Um, um, what can you tell us about No Hard Feelings? Well, No Hard Feelings, again, was went through quite a few different variations, like, 
after I wrote so safe for a heartbreak I wanted I really enjoyed that process I was like, I want something the same so I did like very minimal music and then stacked vocals harmonies for like a quick and short like out sung song and then we play we mess around playing it as like a band and I think even prior to all that it had just been a, like a one minute intro to a big rock song like almost yeah so it was just like it was kind of like almost jo- a joke song in a way like when we were playing it and then we were you know it was catchy and we were like why are we making this joke song a joke when this good song a joke you know um when we were messing around with how to do it and stuff, Joff started playing that kind of delayed bass part underneath a much more softly spoken uh, singing and it was much more drawn out. And it just felt suddenly amplified in emotion, didn't it? So like this, even if it's like maybe not the, you know, the funnest way of doing it as a four piece band or whatever, if we feel like that when we play like that, then that we should probably go with that. Yeah, and is that the choir of Joel's on there again? Oh my God, uh, no, that's a Mellotron. <laughs> it's a Mellotron. <laughs> I'm flattered Amazing. though, John. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know my ears. I need to get them tested, um, but it sounds beautiful. Um, and I, I, I'm still in love with this idea of a choir of Joel's dressed in um, white smocks. Um, well, if cloning finds its way a bit more throughout the rest of the year, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get it. Science sorted. can catch up. Yeah. <laughs> God um, help us all. <laughs> <laughs> and this is no hard feelings. Then this is Wolf Alice on Exposure Radio X. It is Wolf Alice with no hard feelings on Exposure Radio X. It is the penultimate song from the brand new album Blue Weekend, the long-awaited brand new album by Wolf Alice. Um, I know many of us have been looking forward to this. Um, we've got one more song to play, um, and I, I haven't mentioned it, but we're actually talking to you in four different locations. So you're all in your respective homes as we peer into your worlds? Yes. Mm-hmm. In yes. different parts of London? Three of us are in London. One of us is now a fisherman and he lives in Hastings and his name is Joel and he's a member of a choir of Joel's. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's where it comes from then. Yeah. <laughs> the sea shanty element will, will be maybe Absolutely. on the next album. No, I just missed the TikTok trend as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, well, appropriately, we mentioned Hastings because the last song on the album is The Beach 2. Yeah. Um, and um, it's a great way of rounding off the record and I love the way that it connects back to the beach which opens the album um, and um, I also really like the way that the drums and the cymbals create the sea in in my mind now I'm hearing crashing waves um, oh. when I listen to this I hope that that was the intention and not my miss uh, strange hearing kind of it is actually <laughs> it's uh, automated reverb on the snare drum for the nerds out there I like that. That's good information. Um, mm. And it works a treat, doesn't it? And it almost has, um, yeah, a kind of classic Wolf Alice shoegaze start, I think, if I may be so rude as to suggest that you slip into a, a set pattern. But I, I, I'm a big fan of it. And I'm, I'm fascinated by and you, and you also have there's all, like a twangy guitar solo in there, which almost, if you want to read it, you know, you could be a nod to, to surf music surf rock it's it's the way i'm connecting it all together for you <laughs> oh int- interesting <laughs> yeah i don't th- i think don't think we were going dick dale rather kind of <laughs> i don't know something stranger that um those well there, there are lots of things that that mm. sound is made up of probably about four or five different acoustic instruments maybe more actually all playing at the same time it's creating it's um it's something that crops up if if you if we have the choir of Joel, then we also had what we refer to as the folk ensemble, which is a collection of odd folk instruments mm. that we would layer on top of each other to create certain bits. It crops up in lipstick on the glass, and I think in play the greatest hits as well. And is that all you, Joff, or do other people have a go at these instruments too? 
Only I may play the folk instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie wrote the part, but only I may play the folk instruments. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm now thinking, envisaging a, a folk ensemble of multiple jo- joffs uh, on various different instruments. I'm telling you, let's clone ourselves and do this properly live. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It, it, the future may hold that. Um, but where, where did um, shoegaze or that sound um, come into your musical reference points, do you think? I think a lot of it is probably you, Joff, like with your pedal board, like can just make so many amazing sounds that it feels a shame not to use them, even if, you know, you don't want an album full of shoegazy songs, you know? And I think we like ethereal sounding stuff. And I think, I mean, I love shoegaze, but I just don't want to listen to 11 shoegaze songs in a row. I mean, you know, not to be rude, but so yeah, it's just more like taking up the bits that we like from that and putting it, dotting it around the album and stuff. It gives it a wide cinematic feeling. And yeah, definitely. Um, are there key key acts in that world that have inspired you in the past? I just think it's quite a small world, really, isn't it? The shoegaze world. Mm-hmm. There's lots of. I I even don't know if there are multiple shoegaze bands. I kind of feel like My Bloody Valentine probably is the only shoegaze band that has ever been. And there were lots of indie bands around the time that people went, that's a shoegaze band. Right. Interesting idea. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, The Beach 2 then. So back to The Beach. Um, How would you uh, like to conclude um, your your, um, insight into The Beach 2 as we end the album? I don't know. I think just... To end on the beach too felt right for a number of reasons. You know, it, it's got that kind of old school Wolf Alice feel to it, which is nice to close with. It's, you know, I think it's a happy song that, as I was saying before, like the themes of nature and stuff kind of put all your personal dramas into perspective and you know make you you know from i mean that might make people some people feel bad but i think it might make some people feel good i don't know just i just it just feels not it feels good it feels i can imagine the credits rolling over it it's got that feeling so yeah and Mm. and you do say happy ever after as well in there too which is obviously a, a fine sentiment um, so, so we should imagine the credits rolling now as we bid adieu uh, to Wolf Alice and play the beach too. Um, thank you so much for doing this. It's great to speak to you. It's so good to have you back. You don't know how good it is, but to have Wolf Alice back in our world. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, John. And here's the last song from you in tonight's show. This is the beach too. It is Wolf Alice on Exposure, Radio X. Radio X.